Uh, only bet with the nuts, Wayne. How many different games do you play? An eight-hour yeah. shift include different blind levels, separate games. Um, basically, I start with 2040 limit hold them when that game fills up, or if they need a 5-5 seat, then I go there. Then the lesser priorities are 2-3 no limit and the mixed game. But essentially every day, I pr pretty much play everything. <laughs> so, got a raise from Garcia, ace-8 off. Uh, three bet. <laughs> From uh, Ace Queen. Ace Queen's gonna out flop. Looks like uh, maybe not. <laughs> and in limit hold 'em here, you're just gonna pay <laughs> off all three streets. Whereas in no limit, you can make a hero fold with jacks, or you can make a hero call. <laughs> it's a bluffer. So really good laid down by Jax. Um, I actually don't recommend that, but. I happen to be right this time. Yeah, I actually. That works too. I call it the humble button. Yeah, it's very humble. Yeah, it's stupid. Well, modesty is my best. Shout out to Steve Levine in the chat who encouraged me to reach out to Wayne Poker to commentate. I am the most modest, humblest person you ever met. Guys, check out the Monday show. I will be here with Dan, Zach, and Ryan Fellman. We just discussed recent issues in the poker world. Generally, what happens on Live of the Bike in the live scene, but like last week, we talked about Phil Gelfon's new site, One at Once, um, how it may impact the poker world. So Joshua <laughs> raises in the cutoff. David three bets in position. The button, again, this is a what appears to be a chop situation. The flop's king high or ace high like this. Um, multiple C bets will get Joshua to fold his queen. But David elects not to C bet, which would allow Joshua to possibly take away the pot with the first aggressor. So this was a kill. Half kill. Um, both gonna call. The way the hand is played, if Dave, whoever basically blows the, uh, if David has the balls of it, then he will blow him off a chop. But now they're gonna chop the pot. The hand could have easily played differently. Like say, David C bet and Joshua check raise on a summit bluff and just like barrel barrel. That's a bluff situation. And limit hold him. I believe you would call that one. One bet. Yeah, even Yeah, but I, but for for any uh, reason, yeah, what? I think you would call that one. Uh, so while Beach says JJ is garbage, limit or no limit. Actually, I completely disagree. Pocket Jacks is one of the great uh, hands. You just have to play it well. Post slot. Oh, thank you. Um, Patrick Curran probably gave me a little graphics there, commentator, for me. All right, Brian. Did. Oh, thank you. Combination, thank you for Brian Arakaki and Patrick Curran. Give me a little icon there. <laughs> On Around the Felt in the future, I would like to discuss with Dan Zach um, what he finds to be the most profitable games in the nosebleed stakes. I think he's going to say mixed games, but I'm not sure. So Ronnie message, he says, he also has a record for cashing in the main five years in a row, and he has a limit hold and bracelet. Ron, shout out to Ronnie Barda. So three way to a flop here. Zach's going to flop uh, a flush draw and a pair draw, overcard draw. Natalia's pair twos ahead, but also has implied odds of if an ace hits. Joshua with the back door, uh, not flush draw. Ouch. That's the best card for Joshua to hit the nine. 
<laughs> Natalia picks up uh, Nut Flush Draw on the turn. So even though this was the best card for Joshua, it actually turned out to not be as devastating as it could have been had it been like uh, the Nine of Hearts. And Joshua's going to hold up, running good. And there's a value of a Joshua. This happens more so in limit holding than no limit value betting second pair on the board. Natalia going to make a hero call and see the bad news and be like, oh, man. And Zach's going to call, too. So that's uh, something in, that doesn't happen in No Limit. You will not overcall with second pair in No Limit frequently. Patrick, no wheezy today, just Wayne. <laughs> Guys, Daniel Zach's in the chat, ask him questions. He's always happy to answer. Kid's way too above the rim. He's explaining stuff. I'm like, Dan, English only the table, man. English only the table. <laughs> Damon Santor, Ronnie guy bluffed by Miss Finland. Ah, hashtag spoilers. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're basically playing with this table here. Yeah, Ronnie Barta is a very strong limit player. I've been playing him with him for a very long time. I've never played no limit with him, but I presume um, he's fundamentally sound there as well. Winning player. Just don't lay down uh, three of a kind of any Miss Finland, Ronnie. Shots fired. Uh, boxing bet, call with the two. Yes, I agree uh, with Natalia. She should call with the two there. The pot's very massive, and there's showdown value. A lot of people miss draws. Or, sorry, there were a lot of missed draws out there. Clubs, diamonds, over cards. Soul Beach, um, I think Alex Torelli and Daniel Negroni both have YouTube videos on Pocket Jacks. I suggest you watch them. It's great insight. It's not going to like magically turn you into like a huge winner of Pocket Jacks, but it's definitely something that uh, it's actually just harder to play post-flop than say aces, kings, or queens. It's obvious, but it should be a hugely profitable spot. Um, in all the Hold'em games. Jesse's going to have pocket kings raise under the gun. Joshua ace 10 off. I presume he's going to fold this. I lied. Oh, sorry. He has a kill pot, so he's going to call. But if he wasn't a kill, I would expect him to fold ace 10 off versus under the gun raise. Garcia's going to call. <laughs> A3 of diamonds on the button. Has position. Garcia. Oh, sorry. Four deuce of diamonds. And he's going to outflop everyone, I believe. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot about the kings. Jesse has pocket kings. Holds ahead. Uh, Natalia's got a gut shot. Garcia going to fold out his equity. The jack is going to increase the amount of outs that Natalia can hit, but may reverse and ply herself. Y'all playing poker and stuff. Ace ten is going to fold. His gut shot with no spade. Call. And kings going to be good. Natalia probably have to pay off here. Yep, chat rooting for a river nine. You should really learn how to really check your cards and not. I can't peel, I can't do anything. Co 8 E 3 4. There's overcall with 9 7 there, Spewy from Zach Beeb. Um, I don't think so because he knows that he beats Natalia's hand, who had ace two, 
um, the way the hand played out, he can't necessarily be sure that uh, he's losing to Joshua. Joshua can easily be like semi bluffing with like Queen Jack or like King Jack or King Queen or like a backdoor diamond draw. It's just the pot's too big. You just don't expect to win, but the pot's so big, you can't just like lay down hands and limit hold when you have like decent showdown value and you could beat a lot of bluffs or thin value bets. Natalia ace queen off. Or sorry, ace queen of spades. I'm really tripping. Um, Garcia is going to call on the cutoff. Ace three of hearts. Trip queens for Natalia. Trip queens for Garcia as well. Garcia can only chop or hit an eight. Natalia just calls here. I would prefer to raise. Just when you have it, get money in. She's going to raise here. The thing, why I would advocate raising is because somebody else is behind her. So she could fold out somebody with a gut shot, which is the most devastating thing that can happen to you. Or like, um, you know, obviously Jack-10 would have made a straight. It was the only hand they beat you. Natalia getting a raise in. Trip queens with an ace kicker. And this is where the hold'ems are the same. Kicker, kick. Good job, Natalia. That's the name of the game for hold'em, kick or kick. 